I was standing across the street from the Opry House one night, back when plans were first being made for the new Opry land. And I was wondering, after the Opry was moved, if it could still be the way that it's always been. Well, it was late, and as I started to walk away, I noticed the front door standing open, and I thought something might be wrong. So I crossed the street and went in. And standing alone in that huge auditorium that night, I was almost overwhelmed by the thought of all the great stars that have graced the place. And my footsteps made eerie echoes as I slowly walked through the empty building and I took a seat near the stage. I closed my eyes for a few minutes and just tried to remember how it was years ago. And when I opened my eyes, the stage lights was on and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. A man was standing at the microphone and his voice boomed through Ryman Auditorium and echoed down the empty halls. Welcome to the Grand Ole Opry, the greatest Grand Ole Opry of all. And then it started, and they were all there, the most brilliant stars in heaven, all together. Patsy Cline was first, no, she never sounded better. Hawkshaw Hawkins was there. And Red Foley, he sung Peace in the Valley just for me. And Cowboy Copas, Jack Anglin, Uncle Dave Macon, and the fabulous Jim Reeves. Ira Lubin, Rod Brassfield, Lou Childry, and the list went on and on. Far too many for me to name. And then he came on. He bent his knees and threw back his head and started yodeling the blues. It was his greatest moment in glory. Hank Williams singing the great ones that night. And then it was over and they were all gone. Except the solemn old judge, George D. Hay, the man who started the Grand Ole Opry. And he stood on stage alone and he said, Red, I know you probably think you're dreaming, but you're not. Cause all the great stars you saw here tonight did this just for me. Just once, while the old building was still standing, I wanted you to see the greatest Grand Ole Opry. 